Alphabet Intelligence Podcast. Afrobeat Intelligence, democratizing African music. The last time I saw you was in a different space. <laughs> And well, that was a nice piece, actually. I actually it, like it. It was. I liked it. I liked it. It was dark. It yeah, was, yeah. It was dark. I you really kept it dark. It, yeah. And, you know, it felt like a cave of some sort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how you set it up. Mm-hmm. This one feels more airy. Yeah, but I still have a dark place. Why do you have this contrast? Well, um, I've always wanted this. Mm. Why have you always wanted it? What does it represent to you? Being able to afford my own comfort exactly how I want it. Oh, huh. okay. So, I mean, it's still the same happiness because, okay, maybe it's a different happiness. But, I mean, happiness is, is, a, is a really, really deep conversation. If it really, but does this make you happy? Yeah, it does. Because, like I said, or as I was trying to say, being able to afford my own comfort exactly how I want it makes me happy. So this makes me really happy. And, and um, it just helps me know that I'm doing something right every time that I wake up. Yeah. And any time that uh, I'm ever in a place to like doubt myself or second guess things, I just remember that, yo, see where you started from. Yeah. You understand that it wasn't easy. It definitely was not easy. Yeah. You're not even supposed to be here, to be honest, because you're you're doing something that you're in an industry where they don't really care for you and your kind. Yeah. At all. True. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but I mean the love is not felt at all from this end. You know. Um so it's always been a find your way out type of thing. So you guys have, have always not just been creative with the sound you make. Be creative in the way you move. Me, I don't know about other people. Yeah. But I had to and I have to be that way. Mm. Because, again, you're in an, I'm in an industry that does not care for me and my kind. So I have to move that way. And I'm thankful that, um, I'm really thankful that I did not start to move that way now. Yeah. So that's, that's my joy. So nobody can come and tell me, oh, Tempo, you changed. Or, oh, Tempo, you, maybe you just didn't know me before. Yeah. If you, if, you, if, you, if you knew me or if you know me, you know that I've just always, even when I didn't have no popping songs out, like I knew to respect myself okay. and have respect for what I make. So you've learned to respect, you've always learned to respect yourself and respect what you make. Yeah. And this... Does it feel, I know I'll, I'll get into like the parts of the industry where this happens, but I'm, I'm curious, like, does it feel sweeter knowing that what you have and how far you've climbed and moved and, you know, the social, socioeconomic mm-hmm. strata, mm-hmm. you have done it from the work of your hands. Mm-hmm. Does it? Like it came solely from what you, from your brain. I know, right? That's what gives me gives me all the confidence that I need. Okay. It gives me it gives me every confidence that I need. I mean, I don't take for granted that um there were tools and people and um there were people that were instrumental in, you know, me becoming this, but it was a really um butter me, I butter you type thing. Yeah. And if I'm willing to do that with you. That's a big deal for me. Yeah. So for other people, it might not be, you know. You've spoken about, you know, doing this in an industry where you're kind. By your kind, I'm assuming you mean um, producers. Yeah, producers primarily, but, you know, creatives in general. You know, yeah. But um, right now. Producers. You know, I mean, I'm definitely way more than that, but, you know, that's where I've achieved this much and I'm about to use it to, you know, achieve um, so much more. So yeah, that's, that's, that's. Okay. So yes, I think I'll just retool and call you an all around. <laughs> we'll, we'll explore that. We'll also explore that. Yeah. Hold that, hold that down. We're going to explore it. So 
Yeah, so creatives. Do you think, apart from like creating, like making the actual work, you know, learning to move within the industry, uh, learning all the ropes for yourself Mm -hmm. so that you would, not because you want to even keep abreast of what's happening in your business, but to protect yourself. How does that... Man, (laughs) it's all to protect myself and my work. Okay. Everything I do is to protect myself and my work. And... I mean, at some point, you even realize that even that one, you know, even guarantee you anything. Yeah. You know, you could still get stomped on. When you have self-respect yeah. for yourself and for your craft in this industry, some people don't like that. But wouldn't you say it's because of, and I'm not, I'm not holding breath for these people. I'm just trying to, you know, explore how, how I have seen it also. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say it's because people have people are stuck in their ways? This is how it, it has been in the past. I know producers who go and ask the producers who worked with Fela. Mm-hmm. Ask the producers who worked every generation. Yeah, people people did not know who producers There's always were. Always a story. Yes, people did not know who producers were. Nobody. They didn't have the media when when right. they could not tell their stories. Yeah. nobody cared. They yeah. didn't get access to the media. Yeah. None of that was happening. And on the back end, everybody was getting raped. People were getting ripped off. Yeah. And so you'd, you would never, you hardly ever see a happy producer from this market until this generation, to be fair, until people like Don Jazzy, he redefined mm-hmm. it by owning the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, SARS, mm-hmm. you know, exceptional, exceptional guy. Now he's going about his way where he, takes a focus artist and co-creates yeah. and that's how he releases it. Yeah, amazing. And yeah, so you, we've seen that happen. Producers have come and then they found a way to become heard. So, don't you think it's just people just operating <laughs> a system that has always been there? Because it's, it's not new. It's not. I mean... So you guys are the ones pushing to change it now. <laughs> it's it's hard work, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, uh, first of all, this is an industry where <sighs> okay, so first of all, for myself, eh, in whatever industry it is, yeah, I'll always move like me, okay. You can't save everybody, yes, I can only show you how I'm doing, like, you can only see how I'm, I'm doing it, like. Me, I don't know how to, you know, come out and, you know, openly fight for people or, you know, but I can only show you by beating me at the do. Yeah. Because I get that um, in all of this, we are all just for ourselves. Sometimes too, I, you know, I think, I think about the artists and I, and I get where they are coming from. In your reality, all you care about is what is for your own highest gain. Yes. You know, but for the whole demographic, I really don't know <laughs> what can be done because it's, it feels like as we are pushing, yeah, something is also pushing us back, which ensures that you guys push harder. Yeah, but I know my people; we don't really have that type of fight in us. Okay, it's really just a few people. I know it because I see it. I see. When I say we don't have that fight in us, I'm not even trying to be um, ignorant because some people want to fight, but they just can't fight. Because they don't have the resources yeah. and they don't even, like, they would rather focus on creating more. You feel me? So I was telling a friend <laughs> some days ago that I feel like, you know what, let me leave that story. I think I'll tell that one some other time, maybe in like an hour or something. But um, I was telling my friend that I feel like I'm, type of person to you know how I don't know if I'm if this is correct but you know how mother mother hands yeah if a chick goes missing you go and look for that one yeah to leave the rest is it I, that's correct y- yes they they, they the, as long as that one is making noise in the no a shepherd huh a shepherd a shepherd would always like no matter how many they have they would always go for that one that yeah they exactly find. I think mother hens do that too. Yeah, mother hens do that too. Right. 
No, no, no. Mother hens, they don't, they don't, do, they don't that. do that. They always put, they are very conservative. So whichever one goes. They will fight, they will fight you to not touch their thing. But if you take it or it disappears, they just man carry what they have and continue. So, yeah, like you said, a shepherd. A shepherd. So, you have to be like that with your work. I mean, that's, that's, that's how me have been. Okay. I mean, the fight gets harder and you always, always rescue your sheep. So a lot of, a lot of what you, you say is, okay, why is it important that you're respected and the work that you create is respected? <clears throat> um, it's really for me more than it for anybody else. Okay. It's just for me. I explain this. But it's just for me to, I mean, any situation where I feel like this person is is not according me the respect that I'm according him or her, or that he should be according me in that situation, I feel it all the time. You know, <clears throat> and I'm really quick to remove myself, you know, yeah. just for me. Bro, I, does that does that fuck up the water? Does it ruin? Does it ruin the energy? I feel like I do it in a way that you wouldn't even notice, because I'm not here to argue with you. Because, bro, I get the utmost happiness from my own music, like before it even leaves my laptop. Yeah. Before it leaves my phone, mm-hmm. I'm psyched. I mean in that moment of making it and maybe after that, you know, obviously some would definitely sound old to you after a while. That's normal. But generally, my work before it leaves, I'm, I know this is crazy, it's hard. Sometimes I, I sit, like, I do so many intentional things. I know, it's okay, people go understand why I do this thing or they'll fuck with it or... Because sometimes I do some things in songs, execs, sometimes execs, execs will tell me, oh, um, can you remove this thing or turn it down sometimes? I could just do like Sanu here. Because I just, I know what it would do. And every single time when it comes out, that effect, it always happens. So me, I get the most, utmost happiness from my own music before it goes out. So, I know what I'm giving you or I know what I'm bringing. If you don't get it, that's fine. I could just do. So, in every moment that I'm making music with somebody, I mean, things can go south, you know, every now and then as normal. But in that moment, I trust you. I trust that you respect me. And I definitely do respect you. And I would, lo- I would love for every... Producer to have that for themselves. Is this, I know this is something that's supposed to come, like that's supposed to come as a basic, like, you know, water is wet, uh, the sun is red, mm-hmm. everyone, everyone, gets their, mm-hmm. everyone gets their respect. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same. You guys have to fight for it. Yeah. Um, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Like in the mornings when I wake up. Yeah. I mean, okay, let me say, like, two years ago. Yeah, that kind of two years ago. Yeah. Or maybe a little over a year ago. Yeah. And sometimes I'll just wake up and I'll just say, you know what? If if I had known that... If I had known that... This, this, this career line and, like, navigating this industry, quote-unquote, <laughs> would require this much... Brain gymnastics, um, people just messing up, yeah, um, or people just, um, you know, the betraying. Like, you know, when you're growing up, you see all these things in, in newspapers on TV. Yeah, you never really think that <laughs> it'll be a reality. This will be you. Yeah, and then even while it was happening, I really didn't think it was. I just had to. I woke up one time and I was like, "Yo, what the fuck." <laughs> you know, um, well, that's a situation where someone has not treated your work with respect. 
uh, and I don't say your work with respect and has put you in like hasn't given you like due credit, hasn't platformed in the way it was supposed to, and outrightly has not res- like just respected the work that you've created. That must fuck with your head. Not really. I just see it like I mean, if you don't see it now, you see it after. That's how I move, and it always works for me. But has this has, has this been something that has been constant in your experience? Me feeling like you see it after. Yes, like having to have people like catch up to to your brilliance. Yes, actually, I've had to prove. I've I think I've had to prove every time. I've had to show that I belong here. Yeah. Because people, <clears throat> people sometimes make you feel like, oh, people in this, in my space, it's always a, shush, what are you saying? Like, you know, why would you ask for that? Why would you say that? Why would you, you know, in one way or the other, they kind of give you that, that vibe. So that's why for me, yeah, I just allow the music to take me where it's taking me. I will never come down anybody's door begging to work. You know, and it always happens, man, with the best of people. Yeah. But with you, your catalog's growing. So what did, in terms of this, how did it change your, change your experience, your creative experience within the game? when you had a record, when Love and One Tinted started doing what it was doing, mm-hmm. how did it change your, your experience? How did it all, how did it influence it? I was really, that period was a lot. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in what way? <laughs> <clears throat> that period was a lot. Um, because I had to deal, I had to deal with so many things. I had to deal with, I mean, but in everything, I was thankful to today. See, I'm so grateful because it's really not like I'm the grand chess master or anything, but things yeah. always just kind of align yeah. and they always work out. So we work out like love one since he, I don't know if I would want to go into how right now, but I almost, you know, didn't get anything for that. Like, you know, I, I I almost was not involved on paper for you know for that song. It could have what I'm trying to say is it could have gone totally differently. Okay. It could have been a it could have been a we no nobody even knows that because your name is not even on there. Yeah. So it would be it would have been a oh and I'm doing but Oh. type thing or oh I worked on it but type thing so every morning that I wake up that period it was really all thanks and gratitude from me like I did bro I was in you know when songs pop it takes a while for like the thing to show on you, you know? yes. I mean people feel like oh, when it pops you should just be like you should look it immediately but yeah. realistically it, it takes a while Yes, people have to warm up to you. People have to discover you. Exactly. And then and then get in tune with whatever you're making to and know that this is this is something. Your life as well has to Yes. You know, improve. Yeah. You know, visibly. Yes. Type shit. So at, at that time, even though it was slowly happening, yeah. I was just really thankful that I don't know how it happened, but I was able to get it, you know, and at, at the time, I didn't even have a manager. It was just me. <laughs> it was I, bro, it's crazy because... It was just you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy because... Biggest song of your career yet, and bro, it was just it was you. just me. See, I think like some days ago, I went to... I had to get the, the invoice yeah. for all the songs on that project because CK, CK the first EP I made... Think about eighty percent of the songs or seventy percent. Yeah, because I think I. Let me see. Uh, sorry. No, it's all good. Get your facts. Get your facts. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah first, there's eight songs. 
So Benny liked parties, Kiski, Kalakuta, Love One. So that's five. Yeah. Out of eight. You feel me? So I had to get the invoice for all of them. And I had to go really, really, I had to really, really search. And, you know, I saw how much I collected and everything. <laughs> <laughs> because me, I can just really, I can just really be focused on um, moving forward so much that it would take me a while to look back and see where I'm coming from. Yeah. So this this is definitely that type of case because if you, if you had asked me before I did that some days ago, oh, how much did you charge? I would not have known what to tell you. I might have even given you, I think I might have given you a a a higher number than, mm-hmm. <clears throat> than, than what I saw. You know, so I was just really thankful that as naive as I was, I mean, I knew a couple of things. I knew, I knew things here and there, but not as much as I know now. I'm not as confident. I was not as confident as I am now. Okay. You know, I've, I've read, I've gathered as much knowledge as, as I can, yeah. and I'm still gathering. Um, so I really do know what I should know. Yeah. To an extent. And I have other, I've, I've surrounded myself with enough people that know what they should know as well. So I have a strong team and I myself know my business. Yeah. But it wasn't like that <laughs> at the time. You know, now this is, I'm not, this is not me saying, oh, I was ripped or anything. Now yeah. it was just, you know, if you really don't know certain things, you just don't know. Yes. And you the know. more you know, the more. Yeah, you exactly. Know. As you grow, you, you begin to see, oh, there's really value in what I do and you begin to value yourself properly. So I feel like the industry is really, or creatives really, I feel like it's all in the value. Like what you're offering, how much value do you think, you know, what was the value you're placing on this thing that you bring to the table? Yeah. You know, are you comfortable with just leaving when people threaten you with not working with you? <clears throat> yeah. You know, oh, I'm not going to use your stuff. It's like, okay. You know, and it's not like I just became this way. I've been this way. Yeah. If you have, I've been like this for a while. Yeah. And even, I really don't, I really don't think anybody has paid my worth. I feel like I just kind of meet everybody. I just. Meet everyone halfway. Yeah. Like, okay, no problem. Nobody has really, but I mean, it's bound to happen. It would definitely happen. But you also work internationally. Yeah, I do. Yes, but I feel I've I've worked more. I've done more of that this year. Okay. So a lot of the crazy things that I've done recently is about to come out. Hopefully, I don't know by the time this thing comes out, <laughs> they'll be out. But some really crazy things. But yeah, I have. And in terms of music production, just mm-hmm. speaking solely about music production. Mm-hmm. How is it different when working internationally and working locally? What what aspects are different? You mean the business side or the creative yeah, side? Yeah, the, the both sides. Both sides. One supports the other. Hmm. You know one thing I realized recently? This is something I mean, I've not really sat with the thought to you know open it and see where it's coming from or why I feel that way, but I think I have an idea. I feel like with the people out there, they yeah. really trust me. Okay, you have more creative control. Yes. Here sometimes, like they try to, sometimes they don't really trust your opinion or, and sometimes I just look at myself like, you you know it's me, right? Like <laughs> I'm telling you these things, I was crazy. And you're just, you just don't want to listen. I hate that, by the way, I don't, so, so, so that, that occurs more in Nigeria than outside. Yes. Um, which is really funny. Which is very funny because you think that... The reverse would be the case. Yes, but but how I do it is, like I said in the beginning, I, I've always had to prove myself in, in cases and in instances um, on certain songs, you know, and then it comes out and it's like, 
damn, this song is a, is a sound for this person. You know. But it's always soft, you know, nothing that keeps me up at night. <laughs> so as someone, like even just exploring this line of thought, how do you know when a song is for a person? Because I know a lot of your work is explore, explore, go into the deep end, explore, explore, and find. Does it sound like that to you? You do, the work you do is rich. It, it's expansive, mm. very expansive. A lot of it, um, like all of it shows depth because it takes a certain level of understanding of not even, not even sound itself, but like life to be able to like soundtrack our existence. And it is from your sound that your sound represents the pulse of the people. Mm. It's heavy to hear. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it is. That's what it is. And to be able to have that level of power, it has to come from a place. Yeah. It does. It does. And so that's why I respect creativity because that's life in itself. Like almost like you have to live in the future. Yeah, and another reason why I'm always very particular about value and people knowing what they're getting because pigs don't know it's, it's gold. Yeah. They can't know it's gold. <laughs> they can't, you know. Um, so because my music comes from a really deep place, yeah, a place that for the longest I, I really tried to shut out, I tried to act like it wasn't there yeah. because, you know, I mean, I was channeling, I was taking from it. I was taking from it, but I wasn't, I was taking from it and channeling, channeling it into my music. Yeah. So, I mean, the flow in that moment when I'm making the certain music, it's like I'm pouring everything in there. And music, I feel like when I'm making music, I'm making songs, songs is, sometimes I make some songs that make me break down while I'm making them. But now it's not like, oh, I, I break down and I stop making them. It's like I'm having the highest, like craziest form because me going from, you know, maybe just no, just me going from, oh, not knowing if I'll be good enough in this moment to finish the song yeah. or if I'll be able to make it up to, or finish it up to the point where people can, where, you know, maybe the artist is going to like it or where everybody will like it. Like from there, I, I I I get myself to the point where I'm happy about what I'm making. And now it's no longer happiness and confidence that it sounds good. It takes me to a point where I begin to like tear up and maybe I have goosebumps and all of those feelings. Like that's the highest for me. That, know, that was such a beautiful feeling, man. Bro, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's insane. I've, I think it's crazy. So I have to like tap into something to make all of that. So that's why I value it so much. So I'm 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 sorry or not sorry if you feel like oh I value my work too much. But, but you have to But value that's it. just what it is. You don't know where it's coming from. True. You don't know why thousands of people would just hear this and cry. You don't know cuz maybe you're an exec and or you're, you're an, an artist that cuz it's really not all the artists that nobody every artist know what this all these ones where I talk. You yeah. know, there's certain artists that you you know you connect with them on that level, or you guys can make music that can yeah. take you people to that level, and both of you know what you're doing. You know that this is what we are doing. Yeah. Sometimes you know the artists go really just there, and I'm you know I'm just driving everything, and that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. You feel me? So so that's why sometimes it can be really hard to communicate. <laughs> the value of the work that you know that I do because you know it might come to it might come as a shock to some people sometimes, but you know, it comes from where it comes from. And when you create something like a piece of music, how do you know it belongs to a specific artist? How? Sometimes it, it might not be one person; it might be two. Okay, but what elements like black? Like some draw you to pair the art with theirs. Just certain elements. So, for example, a song like "So So." Yeah, 
That's on O'Malley's uh, Boy Alone album. Yeah, yeah. The drums. That's, that song did not even start as an emotional song. The drums, I think they were on like a different beat entirely. You know? And I think I made that beat for Badu because I remember sending that beat to Badu. Okay. You know, but I mean, he didn't respond. Right? Like he didn't, nothing happened with that. Okay. But I knew it was a bounce. I, I just knew it was a bounce. So I stripped it and started to add um, new things on the drums. Okay. Months later, we're here. Song sounds really emotional. It sounds really lush. It started somewhere. Yeah. There's so much experience that has gone into making that song already. Like the beats already. There's, there's already, this, there's so much story I can tell you already. On the surface, I mean, you hear on my lay, you hear, you know what it is now, but experience wise, I, I've already mentioned Badu for you. Cause I had Badu in mind when I was making like skeleton, skeleton, like that skeleton has nothing to do with how this sounds now. Yeah. But that's where he started from. That's, he's the person I remember sending that thing to. I, I'm sure I sent it to him. You know, but from after that, I was like, you know what? I really, I feel like this thing, this can become more than what it is. I was, maybe he didn't touch him. Yeah. You know, so it was like a journey to turn this to something else. The next thing I sent it to Evie. Sent it to Evie? And he didn't, he didn't fuck with it? No, he didn't. Took him a while to, I think we even tried to like vibe on it. You know, but it just wasn't getting anywhere. And it was paining me that it wasn't getting anywhere because, I don't know, it was really paining me that it wasn't getting anywhere. Because you knew it had something. Yes. You knew there was value here. Yeah, and exactly. So when people don't see, when people don't see the value, don't see the value in a piece of art, mm -hmm. like you create a beat, you create, you create everything. Now, you, sorry. Yeah. After this, I had to switch it up from what it was. Okay. To bring it here that, you know, to bring it to what it sounds like now. So I kicked it up, took some things out, added some things, sent it to, <laughs> played it for Omar. Uh, so that was where the new birth of this. this. So how did it, how, when you played for him first, what was the reaction? Did he understand it? It was what I expected, actually. Okay. He liked it. I knew he was going to like it. <laughs> so, but now we were kind of, we were going somewhere that I really liked, somewhere that I was pumped about, Some, somewhere that I was really excited about. Then somewhere, <laughs> somewhere on the road, he just took it elsewhere. Like he just, he faced somewhere entirely different. So I was like, okay, let's go. So I was really, really pumped to like get into the song. It took me a while to finish the song. Like I left it. <laughs> I, <laughs> and then it came back. Bro, you know the songs we could fear you to finish? Yes. Because it was, I was so scared to touch it. I didn't know what I was going to do that would just fuck it up. The song really scared me a lot because I really wanted it to reach there. I didn't want it to lose anything. I wanted you to feel really cold. Like When you really get into the song at like 1 a.m., I want you to feel what I put into it. But you must feel a sense of pride right now seeing that it's out and people recognize it. People feel it. Yeah, I do. I won't lie. <laughs> I can't lie. It's, it's what I expected. And I know it's going to... I know there's a lot of people that don't even get it now. I know there's people that don't get it and they'll definitely catch up. They'll catch up. They don't have a choice. Because that's a sound. It's, it's not just a song. It's a sound that people would definitely or might want to copy at some point. And it would definitely do its thing. Now, in two years, in three years, the world will hear so-so and dance to so-so. <laughs> <laughs> when 
But the world is cu- the world is currently dancing to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the more world, the, the more universe, the whatever it's, it's going to be. It's going to be a virus. And how do you feel like when you when you make music? I know, like being the life of a producer is to is to explore possibilities. Mm-hmm. Like you make something, you're like, okay, this might work here. This will work here. Like that's part yeah, of your yeah, job. Yeah, exactly. So, in Manu speaking, so you have to do your research. You have to understand like artists, mm-hmm. understand artists, yeah. under, understand their creativity, understand directions that they're moving, mm-hmm. understand sound, understand all of that for, mm-hmm. to be able to function <coughs> optimally as a music producer. <coughs> So when you do this and your intelligence shows you like something belongs to either an artist or a group of artists, and then you move your music to them, to these people, mm. and they don't understand it or they don't appreciate it or connect with Sometimes it. Sometimes the music might not want you. Okay. That's another thing. So I'm not going to take credit for all of it. Like, oh, I know how to place this. I know when to... Sometimes the music does all the work. I mean, that's after after creating. Sometimes the music does all the work. All you need to do is send it out. It will find this place. Okay. It's crazy how many times this happened to me. You will always find this place. You might even send, you might be trying to put it in a home where it doesn't feel good at. You know, you send it be to someone that just does not like it, but you feel like, what the fuck? You should, yeah. you should love this. <laughs> You'd really love this, but the person is there until it gets to that person that's like, oh my God, I'll die for this. You know, Godly, for example, I had the demo for a while. How long? Not too long. I think it's just some months. Not too long. But in those months, I sent it. I, I, in those months, I, I played it for, like, I'm just trying to show you how, um, Erratic it can be sometimes, you know. Okay. I played for CK. Okay. He, he he moved to it. Godly. Yeah. He moved to it. it wasn't his thing. I played for Joe Boy. He he knew it was demonic, but he just couldn't do anything to it because he felt like it was just too complete. Like so he, he was he was doing a lot. He couldn't find pockets for himself, but he he knew it was insane. So, and it was just one of those beats. So there are beats that sometimes I just I make them, and I really it's like I I put myself on a journey to find a good home for those beats. Yeah, that was one of those beats. <laughs> so it kind of found its way to Omar. You sent it to him. I or played it for him the first time we met. First time you met ever? That was the first song we worked on, actually. That was the first song we made. She <laughs> being the ass come now. That was the first, first song. First ever song? Yeah, that was the first song we made. I must, how did that feel, knowing that the first time you, you're meeting someone, you're creating something of that magnitude? Does it, does it portend, does it like portend well for the future with that person? Oh. I was already really confident before even I kind of knew what it was going to sound like. It's like how I was telling you about the the, the woman we were talking about the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was telling you yeah. how in my house I already knew like before meeting her, I already kinda had an idea what uh what I would want to achieve with working with her. Yeah. And that song was kind of what I had in mind. It took a while to get there because we had to do other songs. We had to do about two, three songs yeah. to get there. It took a while to get to that one, but we did get to that one. So I feel like in his case, I knew what I wanted to get. Yeah. But I honestly didn't think it was, I was glue. We we're going to hit it on the first one. You know, I didn't even think it was going to be more than that in, in that moment. You know, and I think we had two versions of that song. Two versions that will slap you. Like the other version is a whole single on its own. Like it will come out and do crazy. You don't play. <laughs> the other version is insane. You know, but even so, so, so I think so, so has like three versions. <laughs> three versions. Three versions. What are you guys saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> How do you now choose a version? What version? What version works? What goes into choosing a version that works? And how do you know? I don't even think I've argued with him. How do you know a song is finished? How do you know a song is finished? Sometimes you just have to let go. If you have to find acceptance. Yeah, but for Soso, I think it was not a case of you have to let go. Eh? Hey, nah, because... I wanted this song to take me, like, I needed this song to put me in my feelings. You know, and, man, I had to tap into somewhere, man, I'm telling you. And there's certain songs, it's really not all songs that I do that for, but certain songs you just have to tap into somewhere. Like I said earlier, there's just certain things that I tap from, but I never really admitted that this is this is where, you know, this is where I'm channeling this is where I'm getting everything I channel into my music. Like, I lost my mom at 13. Yeah. And I've never really looked back for a long time. Yeah. For a really long time. Because there's always something that I'm trying to do to, like, just survive or, you know, and of all those things, music was always a constant. Music was always there. Yeah. So I think I just naturally just, I was like, you know what? It's music. So I'm making songs sometimes and I'm thinking about certain things. Not thinking per se, but I'm playing. Like I'm just playing around and I'm just trying to get myself there. I really, I don't know if it's the emotions that help the playing or the playing help the emotions. I really don't know. And it's really not like I, I didn't even know how to play the keyboard that well or know how to play the piano that well or anything. You know, I just always just get in the feeling, get in the flow, and I'm really just... That's why I like to take time. I don't like when people rush me. Like, I found out with this song. I don't like that. I hate it so much. I really love to sit with a song and take things in and put things in, take things out, put things in put things in, put things in, take things out and then land somewhere. You know, because too many times I've seen what, I've been in so many situations where we could have stopped here but if we had stopped there, we would have not gotten this thing. Yeah. So by pushing for the extra inch. Yeah, every time. I just realized that there's so many cases in my life, even with other people, I just realized that, oh, so if we didn't push, we really would have not gotten to this. Yeah, this wouldn't have been the final product. Yeah. I mean, the first one is fine. It will go with people. But I think for the most part, because I mean, all your songs can be thriller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can't be, all your songs can be thriller. Your whole catalog can be thriller. No, you can't. You know, I mean, you might have a couple thrillers. Yeah. You know, Michael Jackson's thrillers. Yeah, you can have a level of that's your that, whole that, that success. Yeah, your whole career can't be love and sexy. You no, can't, you no, can't just yeah. go love. You know, no, you no, can't. No, no, you no, know. No. So, um, whenever I'm making a song that takes that's that gets me there, I just kind of know. You just kind of know what would work with this. Yeah, how this would come out, what the final product should look like. Yes, and. Sometimes in my head, the song don't complete, but for laptop, I never do anything. So is this what makes you, <laughs> is this what makes you a producer? This ability to, because there, there's a huge gap between a producer and a beat maker. A producer, mm. a beat maker just makes beats. Mm. A producer is someone who can also guide the making of the song and make sure like a certain... So we just had a, a helicopter fly by. <laughs> so you live in a neighborhood where helicopters fly by. <laughs> like someone is trying to land on their own house and they're flying by your window, Tempo. Oh my God. I, I'm going to join this music. <laughs> I'm going to leave journalism. <laughs> I need to make oh beats, God, Tempo. <laughs> Thankful. Yeah, so that's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Helicopter has never flown near me. Oh my gosh. (laughs) 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 
but yeah, to your question, man, sometimes you, you have to be, you have to be a beat maker. Sometimes you have to be a producer. And because there's no, I mean, this is for me. I don't know about other people. Yeah. I feel like I'll definitely, I'm getting, I'm definitely going to get to that point where I'll just stop being a beat maker entirely and just produce. Be like the full guide the full process. No, nah, like I mean, so when I say beat maker, I mean when I say you have to be a beat maker sometimes. Yeah, I mean it in the sense of survival. Okay, to eat. Yeah, you're hustling. You're trying to sell beats. You're trying to sell music to artists. If that's if that's how you're hustling, it's like oh, I'm selling beats to artists. Oh, I'm trying to because there's certain times where you might just be in that mood. If you just need quick you know, 1M or 2, I don't know what yes. it is. You might just need... You need money to keep to keep the lights yeah, on. Yeah, if, if you just calculate, say, oh, man, if I sell 3 like this, 3M, we are now. You just do that and it works. You see, you, see, you find people that you sell that to and, you know, you, you get your bar and you might not necessarily care about the end product of that one. Yeah. The it, person too might not, the person too might not care. I'm, I'm not saying, oh, just sell people beats and dip. No, nah, if 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 you if you want me to, I definitely like to even guide, bro. I will always tell you to send anybody that I've worked. I I they always tell them send me the final. Let me hear this thing. Let me hear what it sounds like. Because at the end of the day, it's still my work. Yeah. So there were times where I had to def I had to I definitely had to be a beat maker. So if you're at that point in your life, bro, beat make, pump out those beats, pump out those twenty beats a day. Pump out those 20 beats a week, man. However it works for you, if you want to put out a bunch of the same things, if that will help you to like eat, you know, you can't do that. You know, but then there's producing. Yeah. You know. Um being about the record, the entire record, you know, how it sounds, yeah, how you want it to sound in the club, where you want this thing and that thing to be. So that's kind of why I have problems with engineers sometimes, you know, especially I've had most problems with the ones here. Yeah. Because, and this is, this, this, I even realized this from just working with people. And then I found out that um, these guys, they, they don't, they're not bringing my ideas to life. The thing with me is if I put something here, yeah, there's a reason it's there. Yes. Don't now bring it to this place, to yeah. the middle. Yeah. That's not where I want it, you know. So all of those things that you're trying to do, I already did that. They are not just there for... If, if I have songs or beats that I didn't really, you know, do anything, I'll, I'll definitely tell you to, like, you know, fuck this thing up. But 90% of the time, I'm very particular. But as I'm making the beats, I'm really... I'm cleaning it up. I'm making it sound neat. So engineers will tell you, like, it's really not a problem mixing my songs. Yeah. You know, because shit sounds heavy already before it gets to you. So all you really need to do is polish. But here sometimes, man, like I said, it might be hard to get people to trust you and it's annoying because it's like, can you calm down? Like, I, um, if I could make this, 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 and this sound good, like, just, I just believe that I can make this yours, your own sound good. Yeah. You know, um, I have a record with, my Sego that's coming out soon. Oh, that's a good, that's a great artist. Um, Uncle Sego. Yeah, he's amazing. He's beautiful music. Um, so. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. That's a yeah. biggie. Yeah. Um, I really appreciated working with him because he really, really appreciated my music. Yeah. My Sego feels like, with my Sego, I call him Uncle Sego. He, it feel, he feels like an, a creative's creative. Bro, he, on, like he, I've, I don't think I've ever met anybody that understood, like he told me word for word everything that I did in the song. And he, he, he let me know that I get with you, they try to, you put this here, you put this here. You put this here, you put this here. Give me, give it to me exactly that way. Don't change anything. So this is see the problem. And this this is 
this is this I think this happened from me, you know, working in this space and having people always, you know, doubt how I do things certain times. When I was sending the files to, to them, I was taking off something because I felt like these people won't like this thing. Yeah. You know. Plus to be honest, man, when you're sending a song for mixing, you, you you're supposed to take out saying things. Which I did, but he really he just wanted it the way that I mixed it. Yeah. You know. So he gave me so much power. And I really liked that. He appreciated my music. And it sounds so beautiful. Like this guy gave me a graphic <laughs> representation of because so he works with this engineer, right? Yeah. That mixes for I think he mixed coloring book. Okay. He mixed acid rap. Oh, okay. He mixed um yo, he has done so much. Like ab- albums, crazy albums. So the guy he was trying to mix my stuff. Was trying to move things around, you know, boost things and all of that. But he just kept messing everything up for Sego. Yeah. He just kept messing everything up for him. So no you so we had to like set up a group thingy and he was like, yo, just send it to me that way that you have it. That exact way that you sent that demo. That yeah. is the way I want it. <laughs> you know, so I really love working in that capacity. Okay. You need to be down to, you know, how the song knocks, the feel of it, the... If this is quiet, if this is loud, bro. If I give, if 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 a song, or if a song I produce drops and I don't know how it sounds, I don't really. It just drops and there's something loud, there's something that's louder than how I want it to be. It could just vex me. Because <laughs> that's not the true bro, representation. I could just vex because why would you do that and not send that thing to me? So you you rather guide the entire process, bro? I had I don't even know how much I don't I don't really want to bring to me because I have crazy ex, I have some kind of experience I don't really want to bring in because if I start bringing people in now it will be so much name dropping in this yeah. in this podcast so I'm really trying to keep it to a minimum. This is about me, y'all. Yeah. This is really about me. Yes. So there's cases where even recently artists will just for songs that I want to be involved in like. Because there's some songs that from the beats, I'm, I already, I've already given it a mood. Yeah. Now, God will come to him. He lands on the perfect artist, like the perfect voice, perfect cadence, perfect everything. Now, let's get this mix there. Like, let's get this thing sounding exactly how it should sound. Yeah. Sometimes, artists might get big-headed, like, oh, I want, I want to do this myself. To mix with this person, yeah. mix with that person, but that's not the point. It's my work. Yeah, you know, it's fine to do that, but I do certain things because I want to control. Like, I won't control Lam because mm-hmm. Nami knew why I put that thing there. Yeah, but this beautiful album that came out recently, beautiful R and B album, produced a couple songs on there. Um, that that doesn't send me you know, what he was supposed to send to me for me to listen and, you know, give my two cents and whatnot. And I was really pissed off because if I put something, I play, let's say I play a bass line. Yeah. I put it just in one place in the song, just one place. Let's say the whole song just has a sing, a simple bass line progression, but then you get to that point in the mid, maybe it's like a, I don't know, a bridge or something and the bass does something else. Don't take that bass that I just put in that one place and then try to go spread it all over the song. That's not my vision. Yeah. I put it that one place for a reason. It's there for a reason. So don't go spread it all over the song because that's not what... That was... That's not my vision. Now you're just... The beats... Sometimes I might be trying to just get a beat to get a piece of music to progress. So you start from here... And it just kind of climbs, 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 and it gets to that point, and then drops you back again, and it starts, takes you up again. Now, if you disrupt that by going to take, maybe you as an artist, you take something with the energy from, you know, the high energy parts, and you put it 
in a part where I really want to be chill. I'm not going to be like that. I mean, I might have to accept it when the song drops, but personally, it could just affect me because that's not how I wanted to execute. You know, it's art, so it's really subjective, I guess. You know, so, but I'm always mad. I can't even cap. Like, I'm so, always pissed off at that. So, so what does conflict, me. in these situations, what does conflict resolution look like? That's why I like trust and respect. Okay. Know that, like, sometimes, yeah, I just feel like, yo, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a dickhead thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a dickhead thing. Fighting for your work is not... Um, and fighting for your work is not... It's never a dickhead thing to do. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, yeah. You need to get yourself to that point where you... you someone like Oman for example. Yeah. He knows his... He knows his... Uh, his onions. Okay. So, I occasionally have to give space for his insane artistry to happen. Okay. Like, so you have to relinquish a certain level of control? No, because he gives me control. But I allow his insane artistry to happen. Like, I, want, I need it to happen because it helps what I'm doing. Like, I need your best because, bro, I, <laughs> I'm in studio, at, at the day studio with artists now, we... You will sing one thing, I will tell you, say, oh, let's, let's, let's do something else. After a while, you start to see that they get uncomfortable because maybe they usually would not get that reaction. Maybe anything we didn't sing, you know, just keep it on the song. But I always, like, I'm looking for certain things in a song, I'm looking for certain things. So if, if, if what you're doing is not sounding like it, if it's not sounding... It's not, it's not busting head, man. Like, you know, and I, and I never say, oh, let's scrap this. You can keep it. Let's keep it. You know, even when we have like, we have a full song and I'm not satisfied with this one part, bro, it could just bite me. <laughs> I have to tell you, I can't not tell you. I can't not tell you. So if I tell you and you're still being, you, you want to be like it like that, I'll tell you, you know what, let's, let's keep this one. We have this one. Let's try. So let's, let's do something else. We already have this one. We'll keep the project. We have it. You can release, always release this one if you want, but let's try something else and see what we can get. Trust me. Anytime an artist hears something that's bad, they don't do tickets. Say this thing bad past this one. They don't care if they were telling you they like this one before they collect that one. Cause it's you know, is that career at the end of the day? They need, <laughs> they need that fire, bro. <laughs> so sometimes you really, you have to argue with them to, to get them to that place. You know, um, you, you don't always win. You don't always win. So sometimes you don't always win. So when, it's really all in the experience, man. It's all in the experience. If me and you don't argue something before, you know, you know, grief on one side, I grief on one side, it comes out, it works. You know, the respect is on the build. You know, I know, okay, this guy said this thing work, okay. And then you, you know, you're looking at me like, okay, he, he made this or he suggested this, this works. So it, it keeps building and it's building and it's building. So you guys can get to a point where it's like you already know it's in this up. Like, I'll send you this and I trust that you can, you send me this. And if I tell you, oh, I like working with people that are open to, to suggestions. Be open to suggestions. Don't, oh, this is what's that. And then you're just locking out every other, every other, you're locking out every other thing that that song or that piece of music could be. I don't really like that. Let's try something else. So usually with the big guys, <laughs> I mean, for my guy, for my, for my friends that work with the big guys, it can be a problem. Yeah. You know, you know, so I mean, I like my freedom. I really do like my creative freedom. So if I'm not going to be free around you, what's the point of making the music? Like, I'm not going to sit down there and freeze like a, you know, when you're just doing something that I don't like. 
if 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 the energy is that if the energy is is, is like that in, in in that room and i'm just quiet you just might never get the song yeah or i just won't be involved <laughs> and people might not even know that i made the thing <laughs> 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 And for you, I've seen you like progress towards towards a place where you do more than production. And we spoke about it earlier, where you did correct me and uh, with the word creative to further highlight like the list of things you do. Just in front of you, I've been here. This is my second day here this week, and you have a deck. <laughs> <laughs> You have a deck. Why do you have a DJ deck? Because DJ is one of the things I do, like production. It's music too. Okay. So um, I used to DJ in school, and I had my laptop. That my my first laptop. I used to DJ, but like I said, DJing on 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 on, on a laptop is just not the same as having a controller. So I just had to dead the idea of DJing until I could afford. Because really, all my career, all my life is really just me um, getting something from here and putting it here. Yeah. Get something from here, put it here, double this, triple this, put it here. That's that's really all. You know, I've never really had like a. On a trust fund, a place where money day or something where I could really just now. Nah. Yeah, you generate whatever you spend. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, for the most part of my life, you know. So when I had enough funds or enough resources to go into, you know, just DJing by myself, vibing at home, I did that because I just kind of got bored. You know, I always just look for some things to, things to do. And I've always had ideas in my head yeah. that I've always wanted to execute. So this is all of them just coming to life. You're, you're, you're really in the early stages of everything that's about to happen. So we're really in the early stages of everything that's about to happen. Yeah. Um, you know how the last time you came, you saw me, it was in a different place. Yes. I feel like, I don't know, in some month's time or if you come here... Well, like it, you might you might see something different. You might you might see something different. Mm. You know, because I, I have I I intend to go into fashion as well at some point, but I don't want to go into that now, so I don't. You have a babushka on your head. <laughs> <laughs> you have a babushka on your head. <laughs> so of course, there's an element of fashion that you'd want to explore. Nah, but it's way past that, though. It's way past. It's way past this. I just see. I've always wanted to do that. My pops is. is I don't know if he has anything to do with it, yeah, but my pops. My pops is. He's into. He sells clothes. He's like a trader. Oh, okay. You know, so that's, that's his hustle. So I, I don't know if, if that has something to do with it. So like I said, but you're drawn towards garments and clothes and yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm drawn towards, I'm drawn towards like showing people like you'll wear this or because I, I see, I feel like I see so many things that people could be wearing but are not wearing because they don't have access to it. So like I'm about to make certain things and you know bring certain things in and you know make some plays. Yeah, man, my fashion side is going to be sick. So that plus, you know, making music in general and playing music for people because I love to play music for people. Yeah. I really I love to play music for people, unreleased music, um, music that I think you should listen to. I really do love to play people music. I love the look on people's faces when I play them unreleased. I love to play you unreleased because I know you're not going to hear it again. I just play it once and if you fuck with it, I know. Yeah. Sometimes I play people some songs and I played certain people's so so before it dropped. First time I played it for Bella. I remember I played it for Bella, it just it went crazy. I have the video on my phone. <laughs> Bella went crazy. Um 
I mean, but it's not like, oh, I just go around play songs for yeah. people, you know. But even if you do that, that's fine. Like, it's it's part of my hobby. I move around with the speaker all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, time. I catch, I, I catch I, the I, I, I go from place to place and play music because yeah. I enjoy music. And yeah, so but the thing if is... If I have to hang anywhere, there has to be music. Yeah, in our industry, you have to be careful playing on with this music. <laughs> <laughs> because... True, though, true. Hmm, you feel me? So, I, I just... You know, I'm careful with it and I play for maybe just family, people that I trust. Or I play for you when I know that you go do anything. Okay, true. Because that protects you. Oh, yeah. And I like to make songs for women. So I play songs for women a lot. Because I feel like women are, women are everything. Yes, they are. And to be honest, if you, if you get the women in terms of public facing... You get women, you've gotten everybody. Yes. So just... Just make music for women. You know, even from the beats. Anytime I make beats that are just hard, just very hard, without any, you know, nothing that a woman would like or be drawn to. I don't really like those beats. <laughs> I don't really like those ones. I love my soft beats, my soft music. Understand? So, so. Yeah. Um. Benji, women love Benji a lot. Of course, it's, it says doing dirty things women to them. Why, Benji why wouldn't they love it? It says dirty things to them. You know, love Auntie Tim. You know that one is love. So I just like it to make music for women. I kind of, I think I, when I'm listening to songs, it's part of my filter system. <laughs> Babes would like the song. Yes, they do. You know, you listen like a babe, like babe would fuck with this song. Yeah. You know, and it comes naturally. It's not like I, I never try to force it. It's just, if I listen and I catch it, I catch it. If I, feel, if I don't feel like, oh, babe's not good, like, then, so I just know. And when you, when you make these records and they go into the world and in the places where you don't get the reaction you want, you know, you release public facing work and the public does not catch on to it. Mm-hmm. Does it discourage you in any way? No. <laughs> how do you make how do you make peace with it? By listening to it and appreciating it. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't want to listen to me, I go listen now. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? Um cause if there's anything I've learned, man, is that just put your work out and come on your mind for the yeah. You know, um but just keep putting it out and creating. Yeah, enjoy yourself, man. Because it's it's like a song like so so now, like I mean I keep mentioning it because <laughs> maybe because that's what's hot right now, I don't know. But <laughs> No, but it's not it's, it's a song you really believe in. Yeah. You, you it almost feels like you're part of you you promote it. <laughs> yes, you came to my Twitter space the other day, you promoted so so. <laughs> Like I mean, I do get a percentage off of everything, so I mean, that's beautiful. That's pretty. I mean, what was? Yeah, no, but 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 this is not business for you. This is like, this yeah, thing, no, this, this one thing. is love for the yes. love of this thing. Like you people have to catch this cruise, man. Like that song. Oh, because oh, the same people that's not understanding what's going on there. Oma, that's fine for you. Me, hmm. catching the utmost vibe from this thing. And I only want to vibe it with people that understand it. Bro, 10,000 people, 20,000 people shouting, so, so, take my pain away back at me. It might just make me faint. <laughs> and it'll happen. You'll see it. You know. You'll see it. And when you faint, tell the people to take videos. <laughs> tell your people to take videos. <laughs> Bro, I was sitting in that song. Or that, you know what? Let me show you this picture. So I have a picture on my phone. Yeah. From... I have a picture on my phone from when I was making so so. I mean, I tried to capture the moment. Yeah. I was there. The artist making the song. And it was goosebumps all over me. I had goosebumps all over me. Mm. I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the video and show to you. It was such a moment. I had to. Let me see. Do this to anybody. Play, let me see. <laughs> Whoa, those are actual goosebumps. Yes. 
Those are actual goosebumps. Yes, Jeez. So sometimes I think like when, when, when you say this goosebumps, it feels like a figure of speech. No, it's like, no. You see, no, you don't see I it. see it. I'm looking at it now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing goosebumps. And at this point, sir, we don't need to go down. Like I had to rush, get my phone to like, and I think this way is like different. Like I had to see my phone. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> but like the whole, Dude, <laughs> this shit is deep, bro. I was, I was somewhere else for this for this song exactly for this song exactly. Everything that everybody's everybody that loves the song, they go through it. Everything they are saying about their experience with the song, it's taking them here, it's making them think about this, bro. It made me think about it, making it, yeah. So I don't even know if anybody would ever catch that vibe. If anybody can even experience what I experienced making the song. Mm. You know, so it's like I'm tapping into tragedy. Yeah. You know, because as much as I try to be strong and, you know, just live my life and try to get the best out of it for me and my siblings, you know, I still miss my mom. Yeah. So something like that, when I'm making a song like so so it just so so it just it becomes personal. Like it's already personal because I'm making the song. But now I want you to feel what I am feeling in this moment. <laughs> you know, I want you to I don't know, I just seeing people have or you know Seeing people with goosebumps listening to so so, seeing people cry listening to it, it's like it just brings me joy because I know yes, you get it, you understand, you need, you. I know, say you reach where I reach. Yeah. Listening to this song, she gets like I can just lock, just close my ears. Listen to so so like ten times. Imagine the craziest visuals. Bro, like okay, leave my mom safe. Like just how far that I've come. Like just how far that I've come, you know, without huge help or anything, I have been able to navigate this thing and I'm here as temple that has done such and such, even though I could have really missed out on a lot. That alone is enough. Like, I know how many times I just locked myself with the song and I felt those feelings. Mm. You know? So, with this sort of feeling, with this sort of, like, knowing how deep this runs, knowing how, how personal it is to make this music, it must suck a lot more when you take it into the world and people don't get it. Like, n- not even like, people don't respect, like, within your industry, within mm-hmm. the spaces you work, that mm-hmm. people don't respect it. Yeah. Um, the ones that don't, they'll have to, at some point, don't really have a choice. Yeah. You know, because you can't deny the work. Yeah. It's there for everybody to see. So sure. I don't really, bro, I, I, there's no way I can, there's no way I can have goosebumps from making my own from doing a song like this or doing songs like this and what you think about it would be my business. Yeah. Because I'm not lying to myself. This is all, this is all feelings. I'm for thousands of people out there to feel the same way. I know what I'm doing. So if you're trying to align with me, that's good for you. If you're not. So something else I've also seen, we just had, Omale was in this room. Yeah. You know, we were recording a podcast again. Yeah. We recorded his. Have podcast. you had a thing like this before? Have you done? This? <laughs> I've done Doctor Set and Basket Mouth, but that was together. E- oh, <laughs> that was my second episode. Yeah, it was a funny, funny, funny day. Yeah, so such an interesting, <laughs> interesting one. <laughs> so, one thing I also notice is friendship. Oh, yeah, friendship. Like he calls you Allah. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't call you temple. <laughs> he calls you Allah. 
<laughs> and he screams it out. He makes people call me that, and I tell people, yo. I tell several people, yo, you can't call me that. It's I, just. I know, Paul, why does he call you? Why does he call me that? <laughs> so we had, we had the mic, he laughed, and then he hit the mic, it all fell down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why, why does he, why does he call you Allah, bro? I don't even know where that shit came from. I don't know what. I think I know when he started, but it'd be like Nami even call Sam. I think there was a time I called him Stanley or some dumb shit like that. Yeah. So Allah comes from my surname. Yeah. My surname is Alago. Oh. So Alago is my surname. <laughs> so my 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 email yeah. has Alago in it. Oh. Uh, you know, because yeah. I'm proud of my surname. Yes. You know, I'm I'm the biggest the name has ever been. <laughs> I guess. But yeah, um it is it, is is in my mail. Yeah. So I think after sending stuff back and forth for a while between me and him, that was he just started calling yeah. me out. Like, like, <laughs> so how does how does like so you guys connect like even beyond like tonight now, you guys have to go to the club. You have a day yeah. planned out. Yeah. I'm sure even eight and two. So you have a day. You have an entire day, night planned out. Yeah. How does friendship contribute to the working relationship? Especially in this industry where it's hard to find common ground with people. Mm-hmm. It's hard to find your people. Mm-hmm. How does that influence it? Does it? Does it? Does it make it better, or it just creates? a deeper level of understanding when you work? Mm. Um, I don't know how I was able, with him though, I don't know how I was able to meet just Stanley. Yeah. I mean, I think he took trust and all of that because, and he also, because I, I'm really, I'm really a chill person. You know, I don't, I know you do pass myself. Okay. You know, in any ramification, like with anybody, I respect myself in every situation. So, and I like chill people as well, people that don't overdo. Yeah. Um, and respectful people, because I, I respect, I try my best to respect people as well. Um, and I mind my business a lot. Yeah. So I feel like, we have certain things in common. I don't know how we're able to achieve it, but I feel like it's just one of those friendships that, to be honest, if you ask me, I don't know. You know, I was even thinking about it when that you produce artists, they fight every time. Yeah. The, 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 my boys that, you know, that I don't talk to anymore. Yeah. If you asked me three years ago, I would tell, I, would, I don't think I would have told you that we oh, would have this type of spot. Yeah. You know, I can't, Nobody can tell you why Don Jazzy and the band cannot just make it work anymore. Yes. Only them can tell you. That's, and that's the same way at that time when it was working, they could not explain to you why, why it, was it was working. working. You know, um, so I feel like that's what it is. But I really do hope that, I mean, for all of my friendships, because I'm not friends with, like when I say friends, I mean like uh, more than acquaintance. Yeah. I think this is different. Yeah, friends, yeah, friends is friendship. yeah. I'm, I'm really not friends with so many uh, with a lot of people in India. I'm really just me, just chilling. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I did my, I did my creep. I'm really not. I don't really move industry way. I, I don't know how to move all of that. Yeah, I just, you just work. Yeah, I just make my music and just some kind of things no concern me. So. I feel like if you're drawn to me and I'm drawn to you more, we are good. <laughs> you know, so with me and him, bro, everything you see is natural. I don't, I can't, can't tell you. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah, I honestly cannot. Him and his people, they feel, they feel so at home at yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Not just him, him and his people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They feel yeah, so yeah. at home at yeah, so that's they, beautiful. Yeah, they, they love me. I, I do love them too. But more than anything, we've done an R20 of this. It doesn't even feel like it. Yes, it doesn't. That's the beauty of the conversation, uh, my, my interviews or my conversations. Because there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Always. But yeah, for me, more than anything, because we'll still have more. Mm-hmm. The more you progress, I'll come back and look for you. No, I mean, we'll have, see, I don't think I would want to 
because the way the same way I'm with my music, that's also how I am with um disseminating information. I, yeah. I really don't like you know day 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 yeah. talk this thing. I don't even like to talk a lot. So yeah. um I like to control my narrative. Yes. You understand? I've done a couple interviews where they twisted things that I said. No way. You know, so I was like, ah, me we just they come and I don't need twist it. Me we just they come and I don't need twist. So I, I know that happens a lot. And I have really, really crazy, delicate things to talk about, you know. I get you. I know. You know, like people have no idea yeah. yet. This is really, this one is a soft podcast. This is an <laughs> intro podcast. Yes. <laughs> Hope you, in case you guys don't know, this is the part one. This is an intro Yes, this is podcast. part one. The bomb so, one. <laughs> so Tem- Tempo texts me yesterday and he's like, bro, we're going to get episodes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we start with one and this then one we go is, This one is really, this one is really intro, man, to be really honest. Beautiful. So, but in all of this, you know, I know, like, I don't know your motivations for, like, hustling. There's different between hustling and creating. Mm-hmm. Motivations for hustling are different. Like, you want to mm-hmm. advance your station. Mm-hmm. You want to move forward in life. You want to be able to afford. My family as well. You, you and your family. And you and your people. You want to be able to afford, like, the best things in life for mm-hmm. them also. For them, yeah. But for you as a creative, for... For you as this person who has decided to like navigate life with this very particular skill first before extending, what would make it all make sense for you at the at the end? What would make it all make sense for you? What well, like what would you look look on and be like, okay, if this happens then or if I do this or if this is attached to me, like how do you process your end, like, what would make it all make sense? Like, regardless of whatever happens. Should I be really honest with you? Of course. <laughs> the things that have happened the past year. Yeah. Do you know, have you ever wanted, have you ever wanted something before or you were like, yo, I need this thing or I need to be here and then you're here and you get this and it's like, yo, what the fuck? All the time. <laughs> All the time, all the time. That's my life. <laughs> that's that's my life. You're like, yo, what the hell? Yeah, I've filled out all my bucket list. So in my career. So I'm doing amazing. Yeah. Like, if you asked me one year ago, would you take half of this? Half. Yeah. I would happily take it. You grab it with both hands. I had goals. I had dreams. Still have goals. Still have dreams. But when you're in them, you don't even know. That's, that's how I was telling you earlier that, oh, um, all the things I used to see in newspapers, like I'm doing them now. I'm, I'm the one, like people are going to, people are seeing my, people are about to see my stories or they are already see my stories in papers and, and stuff. So I'm already living that life. I'm really just cruising and enjoying myself and trying to, make the best of everything that I already have because God has given me so much. He has given me so much, you know. So right now I'm having so much fun achieving. Yeah. You know, I'm just having so much fun achieving. Like I'm I'm young. Um I'm really killing it in an industry where they don't make it easy for you to kill it. Yeah. You don't make it easy for you to kill it. You have to fight for your rights. You to really kill have it. to fight. For your rights to kill you it. You have to fight. And even when you're killing it, they are trying to kill you. Yeah. And your work somehow. Because if you're not giving me what I deserve, it's like I can't feed my family. You know, my sister has no feet there, right? Yeah. And it really breaks my heart that because Nigerian producers we are, we are like some of the best in the world. Yes, we are. We are. 
Like, we are. The hot, like we, the we, hardest we, in the world. Yes, man. we excel so the much. The hardest. We, we understand music so much that we excel so much at fusion. The hard guy, we diffuse anything. Don't try. That is what we have above the rest try of the world. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what we have above the rest of the world. Fusion. Like bring whatever sound it is. Yes. Like bring every sound you know. We'll find. We'll make it work. But it really hurts to to also know that we are probably paid like the lowest. I think it's getting there. I think it will get there eventually. Because I think more than anything, I believe now that we're plugged into like the global pop framework and. I know producers who, I look at you now, you're working internationally now. Six years ago, you wouldn't be able to work internationally. Right. Six yeah. years ago, you wouldn't. Because people did not care about what we're making. Yeah. Now the world does. And I think our producers, like even when eventually, you know, everything ends, everything moves towards its end. Mm-hmm. But eventually when we stop being the, new bride on the block Mm -hmm. when the world knows that, okay, this exists here, blah, blah, blah. And everything just becomes normal. You think producers will have it all right by that time? I think producers, a lot of producers will have it all right. Because even when our artists are popping, the skill to make this type of music, this world beating, I think that, that, that would, that would always be in demand. But it's really, I feel like it's really, it's really, really a long way. And I feel I'm not, I'm not imposing that. I'm not saying that's what it's going to be. Yeah. It's just, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's a long journey. Because even from, you know, just putting the producer's name. Yeah. That's still a, it's still a, not still issue, not still Just long putting time. the producer's name. Yeah. It's not still, it's still a big time. deal in this market. It's still a big deal. It's, from paying the producer is still a big deal. You know, I mean, I know... Getting, they, getting the right points and the right splits. Bro, some of those things are not even conversations for certain producers, not me though. But, you know, it's not It's not even a conversation. You can't even... Why would you even ask? Ask for Why it. would you even do that? You know, so... Every... I'm really... I'm grateful every day that... I'm really not in that bracket anymore where I don't have to drag and fight for and just claw for 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 certain things, you know. Yeah. And I feel like I mean, we all have to work our way up to like build yourself, build your value, build everything, show value. Yeah. You know. Cuz that's what drives everything. Yeah, sh- really like I mean, here you really you have to be aggressive with it. You have to I mean, you might have to put in times to work, but that's really what night. That's really what our industry is. That's what music on this side of the world is. You know, um, go have a hot song out, but you really have so much work to do. Okay. You know, to get people to know if that's really your thing, because if you get your royalties, you know, and you're publishing, you can't live an amazing life. Make yeah. people don't need to know you. If that's if you really don't care for it. You know. If, you don't want to be popular, royalties. If you have everything in order, you'll be fine. Like <clears throat> I know that because I've collected, I've seen, I've signed a lot. Yeah. So I know that if you have this, you suppose you should be fine. Yeah. So that kind of knowing all of these things and seeing all these back end things and being involved in so many of these negotiations and signing for so many things, signing for pub. Like signing for sync licenses, yeah. signing for you know all of these things to be used in movies, games, all of these things. Like I know that, just get your stuff. Yeah, just ask. You know, try to negotiate, but you know it's a really big conversation, and people need to educate. And you yourself, I feel like the best thing is you yourself. Just go and learn for yourself. Yeah, you know that's what I did. Took me a while. Ask questions. Get someone that knows. Ask questions. Watch videos. You know, maybe you don't ask another producer. Yeah, go to YouTube. Maybe you don't ask another producer. Go to a lawyer or a manager that really knows his stuff. Yeah. Or don't ask another producer. Ask somebody that will 
have someone that will really give it to you the way it is and explain everything the way it is to you let you know okay what you should ask for what you, what, you know what what is fair yeah you know what you shouldn't go below yeah you know you kind of have you should have all of those things for yourself you know um and like set goals for yourself you know you're stronger than you think you can you, you you don't think you can achieve those things until you achieve them. Yeah. You honestly you don't think you can you know when you do them it's like oh okay now you see that you have to look for something else to do. There's always something to do. There's always there's something, something to, there's something new. There's always something to achieve. There's always advancement. Yes, there's always something. You know, for me now it's fun for me to to be scratching and you know playing music like this for people cuz it's new grounds for me. Yeah. I'm having so much fun. You know, that fear of not knowing what to play, if people might live food like this. I love that. You know, I, it's that drives me. Like, I want to, you know, next one year like this, man, next one year I'll definitely be on Coachella lineup. <laughs> nice, beautiful. So, that would be amazing. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing this. This is our second day. <laughs> so the last the, the few people I come I I see twice before I record. Only very few people. Okay, I saw the band four times. Yeah. Why? I, I recorded that podcast over four days. Banga, what happened? He wanted me to be around him. Yeah, to just catch his vibe. To just be with him. Yeah. He, no, we're friends. And so he likes me. I've even stuck my career out for him mm-hmm. at a time when nobody would. Mhm. But I did because I knew it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And I don't care whether he app- but he does appreciate it. So he's like, You didn't have to do it. And I'm like, I don't care. It's the right thing to do. And that's what I do the right thing. Yeah. No matter what. I don't care about all of these things. Mm. So yeah, I did his over four days. Three different apartments. Yeah. 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 And he just kept taking me around. <laughs> but Brian will over two days. I did Brian over two days. Over two days. Yes. Jesse Jags, it was over two days. You had to go there. I went to Joss. Yeah. <laughs> went to see him, then spent some time in his house, spent some time in my hotel. I was at my hotel. So it's beautiful. Man, it's beautiful. there's so much more to see, man. There's so there's much so more to see, man. Yes. And we'll come back. We've never even scratched off. Yes, we'll come back. There's still a lot <laughs> happening on your end. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> we will come back. Oh my god. We will come back. Thank you so much, Tempo. Yeah, bless Thank you. Much Blessings. Love anytime. Blessings. Blessings.